Hello everyone and welcome on into ClayshareCon Day 5. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, the founder of ClayShare and ClayshareCon. And I'm sad to say that this is the very last demo for ClayshareCon. We have had five full days of demos, tutorials, studio tours, um, factory tours, raku firing. We had stuff on glazing. We had stuff on the carving that I've been doing. We've been making pots. We've been throwing pots. We did decals. We did transfers. We did so many things on this week. Oh my goodness. The replays of everything is going to be available forever for free on clayshare.com. Go ahead and go to wherever you get your apps and download the ClayShare app. And if you did not know, I am going to tell you right now that ClayShare is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV. Because ClayShare is not just an app, it's also an OTT network. That means we are basically a pottery network, cable network. No other pottery school has that except for ClayShare. And so you, if you sign up for ClayShare, you can get 100% access to all of our classes online, our templates, everything, and a discount on our workshops. You also are automatically entered in our giveaways. You can be work along with us in our ClayShare challenge and all kinds of other stuff. We do three weekly live broadcasts, one public that's free for everybody, and then we have two private broadcasts. So ClayShare has everything you could ever need for all of your pottery desires. <laughs> So this right here, and everybody's like, best classes ever on ClayShare. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're not just about classes. As you might have noticed over the last five days, um, I know my members by name. I know what's going on in their lives and they know what's going on in mine because we are not just this cold corporation that's this big conglomerate. It's two people that run ClayShare. Two people make it all happen, myself and my husband, Kevin Phillips. He does all the IT work and does the monitors and edits the classes. And I do all of the creative content, all the filming and um, all the social media and all the PR and basically that stuff, like running a studio. So it's just the two of us doing it all. And our community, our ClayShare members, you guys are the most important thing to us. We wanna make sure you're enjoying ClayShare and that you're getting the most out of ClayShare. So that's, that's where, you know, you should, you should come to ClayShare because it's not just, you're not just a member, you're family. <laughs> all right, so Scrafito we'll be doing. This is kind of the thing that made me fall in love with clay. I really liked making pots. I liked the way pots felt like clay felt in my hands. But once I started carving and I realized I could carve a beautiful design into the surface, I was sold. That was it for me. And I am going to show you um, what is the color of the mug I have on the little page for Scrafito. I'm going to tell you. It's, I have it right here too. Um, so Scrafito means scratch to scratch the surface. And the way the technique works is you have to play with contrasts. If you're using a light colored clay, you put a dark color slip or underglaze on top. If you're using a dark colored clay, you put a light colored slip or underglaze on top. So I have some examples here. These are all on light clay. And often I will use just a simple black underglaze. This is speedball black underglaze with my chun blue on top. The image that is for this class here is that exact combo. It's speedball black underglaze with my chun blue on top. Now I went really a little bit heavier than I did here on the chun blue and that makes the difference. You can kind of see if you look here. Do you see that blue? That is my chun blue when you put it on top of speedball's black underglaze. This is the same combo but I didn't go as heavy. You see the difference? It's a big difference. This just shines and that's why I love my, my chun because my chun blue Yes, it's a great glaze on its own, but when you put it on top of any darker colored slipper underglaze, it opalizes. It's just crazy good. And so all of the markings on this were hand carved freehand into the surface that I did, and this one here as well. And these are just with black underglaze. That's it. Now, if you want to get a little fancy, you can do like I did here with the ombre where I painted on speedball underglaze. I used turquoise. That's this one. This is the royal blue and this is black. So I painted the three on, kind of like we did this morning um, in the ombre glazing tutorial. And then I carved through all the layers to create this pattern. And sadly, I chipped it. 
I don't know if the camera's picking up. See, I, ch I chipped it. That's because I set another pot hardly, like, hard inside it, and I chipped the rim. But other than that, it's spectacular. I might see about re-putting a little underglazing glaze on that and firing it again and see what happens. And there's another Scraffito cup, same idea. I used three different colors, put them on, and carved through. And you can see the light of the yellow. You can still see the carving, but it's not as noticeable as the darker colors. All right, so we're going to scooch this. <laughs> Scraffito this needs to be, a, is that what we're talking about? Where I, <laughs> Scraffito this. It would be a good t-shirt. It would be very fun. So I have a piece here we're going to start with. And we're going to switch cameras, I think. You're going to switch to the, to the side camera. So you're going to take your leather hard piece and you want to do your cleanup on it. You know, this one has a few clay crumbs. Or we could do the overhead. Maybe we'll do the overhead. Um, has a few clay crumbs. So you just want to clean that up now because we're not going to be able to go back and clean this up afterwards because we're going to put under glaze on top and that will obscure it. So you want to do it now. You just ordered all my glazes. You are going to be a happy camper because you're going to be having a good time glazing. The Chun is my signature glaze. I, so Chun glazes are not new to this earth. Chun glazes date back to the Song Dynasty in China. They are ancient. They're, they're you know, thousands of years old. They're old glazes. They have been around. And when I was in college, I was an honor student and I was doing an honors um, study on Chun glazes. So I was actually studying real ancient glazes and the molecular, the molecular structure of those glazes and how they were made up. And so I wanted to replicate that in a modern glaze. And so I started working on what has become my Chun Glaze, which you can get from Clay Share Clay Scapes Pottery. All right, so I'm gonna put black under glaze on this little cup here. Just cleaning up. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna put some on the bottom because I'm gonna sign the bottom. And I usually don't thin this down now. I do have a recipe for a really great um, it's like a slip, but it's really a wash. And you put it on thick and it's just 50% red iron oxide, 50% Gersley borate, and that's going to give you a really nice brown tone. And that's actually the brown I have here. So if you look at this, do you see that brown? That's my slip, 50% red iron oxide, 50% Gersley borate. But here it is with black. So you pick. What do you like better? Brown, black. I don't know. I like them both. It's just personal preference. So I'm going to put this on, and I'm just going to do one really nice layer. If your underglaze goes on thin, you can put on multiple layers. We could have done an ombre. We could have brushed a couple different colors together. That would have been the thing to do for today's theme, right? The ombre day. <laughs> Donna spent all her money at Clayscapes. <laughs> Well, to be fair, Clayscapes is one-stop shopping, right? They have everything you need. And so I'm just using a brush to pull this up the piece. And then we'll do the rim. We'll flip that over. Ideally, you'll wait till your piece has dried before flipping it over. And I'm going to do the very, very top. And I like to use a banding wheel. You could use a cake decorating uh, stand or and a turntable of some sort. Sometimes I'll put the pots on my wheel, on my pottery wheel, and I will just do it there. And the reason I like using a brush is we're getting these really cool lines here, these horizontal lines, and they're going the same direction as a, a wheel thrown piece moves, so it kind of it kind of goes. You can do this on hand-built pieces. That little cup I showed earlier that's carved, um, that little Scraffito cup, this, this guy right here, which is, this is, which camera are we on, hon? Right now you're on the two. Um, we can stay on two. One. No, we stay on two. So this is Speedball Yellow, Speedball Aqua, Speedball Sea Blue applied and then carved through. But this is a hand-built cup. So it's, um, it's a really great cup. I don't have a screen. Sorry, folks, had to. Scooch that. All right, so once this is done, I did a little bit on the inside too. 
we're just going to let it dry. I usually will put these on, wrap my, after they've dried to the touch, wrap my piece up in plastic and let them sit until I need it. And so they're ready to go. And then we're going to take our little craft, our little foam. I was going to say craft foam, although craft foam is not quite thick enough. We're going to use a little piece of foam just to rest this on so while we're working, we don't damage the piece at all. Because we've made this beautiful pot, we don't want to hurt it before we carve it. And this brush, this was a brush, just a not one inch Escoda brush. And the bristles are very soft. I want to thank Drew. He said the bristles are really soft. <laughs> and he's right, they are. So it's just a one inch round brush that I used. You can apply <laughs> with any brush. I know because my favorite brush to apply my slip and underglaze with is called the parking lot brush. Except I have the only one in existence because I found it as an undergrad student in the parking lot outside of the music theater and I have been using it since then. And if you want to know the story of the, park, the magic parking lot brush, you can go read my blog on ClayShare Resources. Have fun with that. So, all right. You got an Artista pottery wheel. Woohoo! On Bailey's with a $112 discount. It's on sale for $4.55. Well, there you go. You love doing the Mishima and the Jeshima thanks. I'm glad you love it. So I just want to let you know right here, the, the Scrafito is a, your line is the negative mark, right? So we're taking away. So the negative mark is our line. When we do Mishima, it's a positive. We're inlaying. So it's an opposite almost. So if we look at these two um, pieces here. Oh yeah, go to the front, go to the front. So uh, let me grab a finished graffito to show you. So we'll talk about this because this is really important and it can be confusing the different terms. Mashima is an inlay. That's where we have carved a line and then inlaid it back with a color. So that's a positive. And then graffito, your marks are the negative space. So that's a negative line work. So what you leave behind um, can be the image or your lines could be the image, it's your choice, but it's a different look. And so that's the difference between Mishima and Scrafito. One's a negative, one's positive. Taking away, adding. All right, so I'm gonna be using, this is the P12 carving tool from Diamond Core Tools. Um, I, I have to tell you, if you can only buy one, don't get this one. Get the L3 Diamond Stylus tool, because you can carve the graffito I'm going to do with that as well as Mishima really fabulously. Plus, um, you know, it's my favorite one. But if you're buying two, get this one or the P1. The, 12, the P12 and the P1 are very similar. The P12 is a little um, smaller and more maneuverable. All right, we're going to go ahead and carve. And we'll just do a simple line, leafy line. I find when you're starting, this is what I show people because Anybody can do a leafy line. We could do geometrics on this, actually, if we want to. I could have done some little uh, triangle stuff. Maybe we should. Is it too late? <laughs> yeah, I think I've committed. I think I've committed to doing some leaves. And so I'm carving in the surface. Um, I don't think it's 1 16th of an inch, maybe 1 32nd of an inch down in. It's a little bit. We're not carving a lot. And I do have a stiff bristle brush that I use because I don't want a buildup. And I'm using the plastic to collect my shavings because I don't want dry clay bits all over my studio. So if you have any questions about this technique or anything that's been going on during Clay Shark Con, now is your best chance to ask me. Actually, it's probably your last chance to ask me in person or, or on the camera since this is the last demo we'll be doing today. Can you ombre on Mishima? You sure could. When you do your inlay, your, when you actually put your colors on for your inlay, just do them in the bands like I showed you earlier today 
with the color starting at the bottom or the top and apply them the same way. And then when you wipe them back, you can have an ombre line. Mm -hmm. You certainly can do that. I mean, I have found in pottery, there's very little that the word can't applies to. I actually don't believe in the whole, you can't do that. Um, when people tell me I can't do something, you know what it does? It just makes me do it, right? My, and uh, and that's, that's the, you know, that's how I am. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. Don't tell me I can't do it. <laughs> I'll be doing it. So we'll carve this. And I would say this piece is a, really not much thicker um, than I would throw a piece if I wasn't going to carve. I throw my pieces about the, an equal thickness, whether they're for carving or not. I used to go a little thicker on the carved forms, but I've just gotten, I, I think I carve a little lighter than I used to. De Deb says, when I'm told that, I just say, I just say, just watch me, right? I know, I'm that way too. But I think we should all be that way a little bit because you shouldn't let anybody dictate what you can or cannot do. And in art, like ceramics, in, in you know, pottery, it's an art. Yes, there's science involved because we use chemistry and math, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You get to do what you want. So we've got beautiful rim. I don't know if you're in the above. You can see. Look how great that looks all the way around. I mean, you could just stop here, right? Say, yeah, that's done. It looks a lot like the um, just carved piece we did without this graffito. So if you watch my Yes, You Can Carve a Pot video uh, tutorial we did earlier the day one on Clay Share Con, I did something very similar to this, except I didn't use the underglaze. I just carved directly in. So you can see that you don't have to do a slip to do the carving, right? But you can if you want to. Let me hold it this way and carve down. And have a good tip. Move the pot. Don't try to move your hands. I do what I want. I'm, well, you know, I live in Vermont, and we do have a saying here. It's, I'm from Vermont. I do what I want. It's a real thing. And so I see folks are asking about the discount code for the, um, for the Bailey. So that is the Clayshare Mini 25 to save $25 off of the Bailey Mini Slab Roller. Yeah. So when I'm working, I'm not only working, I'm trying to read hundreds of comments coming in. So I have to look up from my work to read your comments. So if you're asking me a question and I can't get to you, I really hope somebody else who knows the answer that's watching along will answer for me. Um, if it's a direct question for me, I will, I, you know, it might get lost in the hundreds of comments. So I just tell folks always, be patient, ask again. I don't mind if you ask multiple times. And, you know, I tell people, you can always message me or email me. Just keep in mind, um, I get a lot of, as you probably imagine, emails and messages. So it takes a little while to get through them all. I have actually never gotten through them all. I've never been, I've answered everything. That's never happened. Uh, there's always more coming in. There's no way. I don't think I can answer them all. But if I do, I will let you guys know. Like, that's it. I'm all caught up. <laughs> hey, Krista, I'm glad you're back. Just in time for Clay Share Con. Woo! And you see I'm doing this, this fun carving where it looks like the one leaf is behind another leaf. Let me get this bottom. Where do you get speedball underglazes in Canada? Does Amaranth carry them? Any of our Canadian friends?
friends out there, where do you all get your, where do you get your speedball underglazes from? And, and this was just speedball black. Does amaranth have it? I mean, you were not in Canada, hon. I'm sorry. So you may not know. But somebody out there might. And if you do, share it. Share it. There is no discount on the Diamond Core tools, but they are doing a deal. They're doing a free sanding product. <laughs> we'll have Kevin look it up, and I'll get back to you to let you all know. So you're just getting into speedball underglaze. What colors do I suggest you start with? All right, Diana. Um, I'm going to grab, how many you want to buy? I mean, really. <laughs> I have 24, including, well, black. And um, so you want to get black. You want to get red. You want to get, I would get orange. I would get melon. I would get yellow. I hope you're writing this down. I would get chartreuse. I would get pine green, aqua, sea blue, turquoise royal blue, and purple. How'd you like that? And if you want a pink, I would get soft pink. So that's not all uh, that they make, that's just a selection. And I'll actually uh, write that list down somewhere so that everybody can see my favorites. I have 24, I use a lot, my 24 go-to. And the brown I use is Teddy Bear Brown from Mako. That's my favorite brown underglaze. It's, it's hard to get a good brown. Some of you might have found that out too. But the Mako Teddy Bear Brown has been really nice. I believe it's Teddy Bear Brown, or is that Amico? See, I don't even know at this point. After working uh, about 18 hours a day for I don't know how many days straight. I don't know what's going on. All I know is I still have our Good Morning Clay Share tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. bright and early. We'll have our private broadcast for our premium members. So it, the fun doesn't technically stop. Uh, <laughs> it, just keeps, it just keeps going. Clay Share never ends. It's <laughs> it goes for life. <laughs> Amaranth does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it Amico's Teddy Bear? All right, so Mako has a brown that I like, but I don't know the name of it, which is terrible. I just know it's on the shelf over there. And that's the extent of, that's all I know today. So I'm, fill, I'm removing, you know, the way Scrafito works is you have to remove material to get a good design. Like if we look at here, this is nice. We can see the patterns, right? But when we do this, and remove material, you can really see the leaves. They start to pop so much more. And I'm just going to do random little lines. And what I like about this, it's very much like a woodblock print. I just love that. And that's what I think really drew me to pottery when I started. I was doing printmaking. And I was an art major. And I was loving it. I was loving the printmaking so much. Um, when I took my pottery classes, after I got further along and we were able to, you know, when I got a little better and I could actually throw properly and we started getting into surface and I started learning about all the different things you can do to the surface of a pot. When I found out that you could use tools and carve patterns similar to what I was doing in printmaking on pottery, that was it. That was the end for me. So although I still do printmaking once in a while, I am not a printmaker, I'm a potter. I thought I might become a printmaker or a painter at one point, but I, I'm, I'm just firmly rooted in the mud here. It'll, it's just in my blood, I don't know what to say. It doesn't make a difference which way you stroke with the tool. No, this one's a, this tool, unlike the P1, has no right or wrong. And the P1 doesn't either. It's just what works for you. This one is a really cute little V. I mean, we can take more material away by carving it a little more on its side. 
See how we're taking more away when I do that? See, I removed a lot more than I did there. So Michelle has a fabulous question from, from ClayShare. If you become a premium member, do you get access to the archive videos? Absolutely, yeah. Um, we have hundreds of videos, thousands of, hundreds of classes, thousands of videos. And we have full length formal pottery classes on there where you know I sit down and break everything down, talk about everything you're gonna use to make it. You get the templates, you get everything. And we make a project start to finish. And then we have shorter videos that um, are just little tips and techniques and you know little mini tutorials and then also the live videos where we do make make along classes where we actually make things together live um, sometimes it'll be a, a brand new class will happen that way it'll be something you've never seen before and we'll make something together which is really fun and sometimes somebody will ask about an existing class and they want to do a make along because sometimes it's fun to make it as a group instead of just you know watching the formal class so on the classes that I have filmed it's 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 me teaching you there's not um, there's not an audience there's nobody there but me and you and I'm talking directly to you there's no interruptions it's only about instruction and that's why it's so good because if you need you know a lot of technical knowledge and you're just getting started those classes are great and then also, chi you know, joining us for our lives and being a part of that is a great way for the live broadcast to connect with our community that we have. And we have, I, I will say it, and I want somebody to, to, to um, say otherwise, but we have the most positive, supportive, encouraging community in pottery out there. And because we just have a really great, great group of people and we just want to see each other exceed, succeed and make great pots. So look how we're doing. Look at this coming along. Simple almost basket weave. Yes and we have the Monday morning breakfast talk with chocolates with Jess. That's right on Monday mornings um, we have a little chit chat. We talk about what's going on in clay share. We talk about what's coming up. Uh, we've talked about Clay Share Con a lot over the last few weeks, um, and I eat chocolate. And this next week we have, well, tomorrow morning we have some chocolate that was sent to us from Seas Chocolate, and we have chocolate lollipops. I saved them. I ate the others though, Heidi. So Heidi sent me some chocolates and. Um, it did say to eat and enjoy during Clay Share Con, so I did eat the, the box of chocolates, and I shared with Kevin. Don't worry, I shared with him. But the, pop, the lollipops, I saved the chocolate lollipops. We'll eat those tomorrow. And tomorrow morning on the broadcast, we are going to do a wrap-up of Clay Share Con. Um, you know, get feedback for that. Talk about the new March challenge. Every month we have a challenge for our members. Um, so we'll be talking about the challenge. And we'll talk about the new Maria's workshop we just put up that people can register for and the other workshops that are coming up. And so it's going to be a pretty fun morning tomorrow morning. And those all start 9 a.m. And if you're a premium member, you know, you can just tune in at 9 a.m. Eastern and it's on the app right there. There'll be a little box and you click on that and it opens up and you get to watch. But only premium members get that. <laughs> Oh, Liz, you don't know if you would have survived the pandemic if you hadn't found Clay Share. We, um, you know, we are so thrilled and blessed to have so many people come and find us during these difficult times. It has been great to have people come in and discover their love of clay. And, you know, we have to find the good through the bad. So we have to find the silver lining through everything that happens in the world. And if if that's what it takes to find the fact that you've discovered a great community like ClayShare and something you love doing, like making pottery, then I won't say it's worth it, but it's, it's, it's close. It's, it's, the, it's the blessing we can look at getting from all of this, right? 
Uh, Michelle, I'm glad you found us too. You know, all of our, our members, when you guys come and find us, I know the first time you're watching, you're like, who is this? What's this person doing? What, what, what is all this? Right? And so, yeah, it could take a little while to, to get to know us. And we have members who don't, don't comment, I know. And that's okay. You don't have to. Just knowing that you're there watching and you're part of it with us is enough. You know, you can be a member that, you know, you're know, just a little quieter. That's all. We are cruising on this piece. So when I hand carve, it can take about an hour to carve a piece. So it's not quick. You know, the making can be fast if you throw it on the wheel. And people will see that and they'll be like, oh, it only took you five minutes to make that piece. And that, there's that part. Yep, there is. It can only take five minutes, but then you have to carve it <laughs> if you're carving. And that, that can take hours sometimes. And Jennifer, some of us talk all the time. No. We have more vocal members. I think that's the way it is in life, though, in any family. You have some that are quieter than others and some that are, that are more vocal. So let's see how we're doing. Look at how the carving, what I really want to point out is... This carving away, this area, has really made the leaves here pop. If I hadn't carved these away, we'd be looking at something like this. Now, we see these leaves, but it, it just doesn't look quite finished, does it? It looks like this needs something. And I don't think I mentioned the dryness of this piece. This one that I'm carving right now is a very dry leather hard. It's slightly drier than I prefer, but not so dry that I'm having any struggles carving. And as you can see, it's, it's carving fine. So if you cannot draw at all, can you trace an image? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you can. And so what you do is you lightly trace the image. You put it up against this and you lightly trace it. And what it will do is it'll leave a little indent or actually, if you use um, a carbon paper, or graphite paper, actually, if you use a graphite paper, um, the lines will transfer and you'll see them on the surface. So you certainly can do that. I know a lot of people um, don't draw or are just not comfortable in their drawing skill. And I definitely don't want that to hold someone back. And that's why I did that demo. The first demo we did on day one of Clay Share Con was, yes, you can carve a pot. Because you saw, I just did lines. I just pulled some lines. That's it. We just pulled lines. That was easy. So no matter your skill level, you can do that. Let me do a little bit over here. So I hold the pot, um, you know, resting it on this little foam piece. And then I have my hand, the side of my hand resting here to support my hand. Because it, it's really hard to carve floating out. You, know, you want to have your, have my elbow tucked in and I'm able to support my arm that way and then have my hand here. You could use some sort of thing if you needed to to support your hand for carving. If you find that you're really struggling, um, putting it on the pot you don't like or you don't want to mess up your design, you can get yourself something to rest it on. Maybe raise another piece of foam up next to it. And I'm, I don't want to ask yet because Clay Share Con is technically not over, but I really want to ask everybody, and I guess we'll talk about this tomorrow morning in Good Morning Clay Share. We'll talk about your favorite part of Clay Share Con. And we do have an announcement, um, which we've been talking about, Kevin and I, and a few of our sponsors, how much we've all loved doing Clay Share Con. And although we can only really do Clay Share Con once a year, as big as it is, we've been talking about doing a mini Clay Share Con six months from now, a one day mini con 
It'll be an extravaganza. So everybody will come on and do one thing, all of our sponsors. And I'll do a few things, our most requested um, demos that you guys want to see. And we'll do a mini con. That'll probably happen in August. So just when you think it's all done and we're all sad because there'll be no more, we have to wait a whole year. No, it's not like Christmas. You don't have to wait the whole year. You just have to wait six months. It's only six months. That's not that long. You can make it. So we're going to do Minicon. <laughs> You're up for it. Minicon, I know. And um, it'll be fun. It'll just be a little something at the end of summer for everybody. I think it'll be perfect. And I will be recovered from my surgeries, well recovered, I'm sure, by then. So I'll be back at it. But just a little something, a mini con, um, because the big one took months of planning and so much work that I can't, we cannot schedule it more than once a year. It's just not possible. But mini con, well, that'll still be a bit of work, but we can, we can handle one day. Come on. It takes you a year to save. <laughs> so now I'm just going to clean off everything right here. And then the last bit is I did put underglaze on the bottom there. And there, it's not really a problem that there is underglaze on the foot. I just don't like the look of the foot being partially underglazed. So I'm going to take a rib. This is a stainless steel rib. And even if it's a serrated, they always have a flat side on it. And so I'm just gently scraping away the black. So you just see a white ring, just a nice white ring, you know? I'm seeing people's favorite parts. Dirty Girl Rich. Yes, Rich McNatt won the Dirty Girl Tools. He's a dirty girl and he knows it. He's never getting away from that one. <laughs> And, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Diane wants to know if there's a white underglaze you recommend. Yeah, um, so I really like Mako Stroke and Coat Cottontail for a white, it can be a glaze, also an underglaze. But other than that, if you wanted something that was not a, a glaze, that was just a straight underglaze, um, I've used the Amico white. I, I, I believe the white from Speedball is a little creamy. I think the Amico's white is a little more white. I don't use white much, um, but I do use it. Here's the, yeah, go ahead. Here, I can show you the two whites. Am I in the overhead? Uh, they're almost the same, I think. So this is Amico white in this hand. This is Speedball white. Um, yeah, I think they're really close, honestly. Uh, it's going to be a, a preference, um, and maybe cost factor too, because the Speedball are a little more affordable. I'm going to hang this up. <laughs> maybe. Put that back on the wall. So I clean this off. I need to sign the bottom. Yeah, go ahead, ask me the question. So uh, Brigitte wants to know how you get the white, dusty finger marks off the black underglaze. Hmm. They won't show. I just brush them off like this. They're fine. I'll, uh, here's a finished one. You can't see them at all. They're, they're, they're nothing really. They're not a problem. They'll be gone once we, we'll bisque it and then we'll glaze and fire it because this piece still needs to be bisque fired. But all that dusty bit, I just brush it away. And this kind of brushing, I'd step outside and do. And if you've uh, like accidentally bumped your rim anywhere and have a little nick in it, just grab your underglaze and, you know, put a quick coat on your rim to fix that. I do want to sign this, and I was going to see if I had my, my L3 near here, but I don't think I do. I, I, all right, I can't grab my L3. We didn't talk about the L4, but I happen to have an L4, and it's a, it's a good look. Not, there's nothing Diamond Core Tools makes that is not great. So this is a little teeny, if you want the finest little tip for carving, 
you could get the L4 diamond stylus tool. It has the small end, which is great, but then it also has this crown end, which you see how that's much bigger. And so we'll, we'll use that to do, see the line you can get with that? So if you like doing, see how I'm doing more curvy lines? Do you see how this really curves easy? And this is the L4, which is great because you get this big fat line, but then you turn it around to the other end and we'll just do it right next to it. You get this tiny little fine line right here. And so you can do cute lines. So you might want to consider if you're looking at getting some diamond core tools. I know for this graffito we use the, the P12. Um, I love the stylus tools. Oh, I hate to say a little more, but we can do super swirly things with them. And we did that in our Mishima. We showed that. So you can scraffito with these tools here really easily. And so it's like, I'm going to put a little heart above my eye, right? And I'm going to put little hearts above my Phillips. I don't normally do that, but I want to show how tiny you can go with your tool. Oh, sweet. So this one's carved. This is, this is carved. That's it. So if you're going to, um, if you're looking to get some diamond, st diamond core tools for carving, I will tell you my complete, unabashed, honest opinion about them. I will tell you they're all fabulous, but I will also tell you it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do really straight lines, more geometric lines, um, you're not going to do a lot of curves, right? I don't need my glasses anymore because I'm not carving. Uh, if you're not going to do a lot of curves, you're going to do straight lines only, right? Then I would look at the P1 or the P12 or any of the P lines, any of those that they have, because they do really straight lines. If you like really curvy, swirly lines, like, um, you know, on my signature or I do on the Mishima, do I have, I put them away. I got this one, hold on. So this piece here has a lot of curve, the Cherry Blossom one. I actually use the L3 and the P, the L4. So I use the L3 and the L4 to do this piece here because it has a lot of fine lines in it and there's a lot of swirly, swirly lines. So if you're going to buy a tool and you know the kind of carver you are and you want to do straight lines, get the P12 or the P1. If you like to do a lot of swirly lines, then you either want the L3 or the L4 right here, which is the crown and ball. So the L3 is a large football, small football. The L4 is crown and ball. So it's a little tiny fine ball point. And then this crown, I don't know, can I focus on that? Oh, wow, look at that. So that's the crown end. That's the ball end. The ball end is very fine. So you get this double-ended tool. Um, I don't know if they come with the cool animal print gripper anymore. I think that's I think that's old because this one's pretty old. I've had this one and I, they don't sell them in cases like this anymore. They come in beautiful boxes, but I keep mine in my case because I lose things and I don't want to lose these. So hopefully, you know, that answered some, some questions we have. And I'm glad you all are loving everything. You've been away from your membership for almost a year and you missed us all. And I'm so glad you're back. Melanie, I'm glad you came back. Is that explained on their website? Uh, yeah, I don't, I think they do talk about that, but this is my personal preference. I know potters, I, I, I know potters that do other types of carving that have their own personal preferences. These are my favorite tools um, that I use. And when I'm gonna do, uh, and what I think, and what I would recommend is, I would use the Diamond Stylus L3 or L4 for curvy lines and the P1 or P12 for straight lines. Because this does a better job getting a nice, I mean, the one we just put the, what time is it? What time we go to? Are we going to? Oh, we got 15 minutes. Pff, that's a lifetime. Hello. Let's do this. Let's do straight lines. All right, so here we have a cup. Straight lines. Straight lines. We'll do straight lines. This tool is amazing for straight lines. 
So let's go ahead and I'm just going to make a little tick mark up there, mark there so I know my half points. And I'm going to draw a straight, but it's an angled straight. So you can get these really beautiful long straight lines like that. What should we do over here? We got to do something with this. I started it. I'm going to change my angle. And I'm going to finish this piece and join these. Cuz I'm going to that I'm going to that line there. I mean, you could do something 80s. <laughs> it's a very 80s pattern happening here, lady. What are you doing? So I'm, I'm just going to play. And show you straight lines rule. So I didn't have a plan for this cup. I just started thinking about the straight line versus a curved line. So this one is going to be a very geometric piece. Which tool is that that you're using? This is the P12. So if you want to do really straight, no curve at all, and that's your favorite way to carve, then this tool would be your best friend. Let's go this way here. But the P1 would do this, the P12 will do that. Um, I bumped into that line. I also have a form that's more curvy. This isn't a form I would normally use for a straight line pattern. I would go for, I would do something a little different, but you know. I'm just going to put shapes in here. I figure it's my pot. I'm going to do what I want. Straight lines. Down. So if you've never carved before and you've always wanted to try, you could just do some random lines on the surface, sort of like I'm doing. Let's put one in the middle. I'm too far apart on these. Got a little off my line. Ooh, I like that. Let's do that. Let's try that. So say you want to just branch off one line. So this is kind of a mark making cup now where we're just going to practice line making. Let's see how much more we can take off with that. So I'm taking a lot of clay off that. Yeah, I will glaze probably these with my tongue. I'm thinking that's what I'll do. The blue mug. Um, which mug? I'll go over it gladly. Uh, the bird mug? The, is that what you mean, Teresa? Do you mean the bird mug? Because I'd happily do it. So this one ended up being a very crazy abstract piece where I'm going to carve away all that's in here. So scraffito can also be the complete removal of all underglaze color. It doesn't have to be formal lines. It can be this kind of scratching like I'm doing right now where I'm kind of removing away and we get this really rough finish right here. Let's get that rough finish. It's a little different than what we were doing before. So you can do two lines close to each other and then a space. And then two lines close to each other, then a space, then two lines close to each other, then a space. And so it creates a repeating pattern that way. 
So that's another thing you can do with lines. We got a whole we got a whole bunch of pots. I mean, we could really get crazy, and you could turn the piece. Just keep turning. Don't stop turning. And I just put a line. <laughs> I just did a line there. Let's do another line. See if I can get my hand so that I can do this whole thing without stopping. I don't think I can turn my wrist enough, sadly. But look, I'm doing parallel lines across the pot. That's pretty cool. Now, want to do little triangles in there? Triangles or straight lines? So you could just do little, a little band of triangles on your piece somewhere. Pick a spot. Draw a little belt like I did and put yourself some triangles in there. So look at that. How fun is that? And we've got all, all this craziness happening. This is definitely going to be a crazy test mug. So for doing carved lines, mm, I recommend, I like the L. I, well, mm. <laughs> this pot is going to, it's, it's in trouble. You realize that. Um, Babe, can you show a uh, close-up of the uh, carving tool you were just using? Yes, I can. You want to go to the front? Mm -hmm. And I'll gladly do that. So this is the P12. And that's good for straight lines, right? Not good for, cra for curvy because, let's just talk about that again. You've got these two um, blades coming to a point, and so it creates a channel. And it's really hard to turn that channel really quickly, right? So you need something that's not creating a channel. You need something that's cutting a line through, like a swath through. And so let me just show you um, the swirly whirlies we can do on here. Let me fix my little foam. So we have super swirls like this that I could no way do with that other tool. I could not do it. It would be really hard, um, near impossible actually, to do it. So I'm going to swirl this side a little bit too. Did I do one going that way? I did. So for swirlies, you might want something like this, and then we have the L4's crown carver. So do you see how the line is a little bigger than over here? So it does a little larger of a line. So we can just swirl all day long on this. This is probably the most uh, swirly thing you'll do is swirls. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Couldn't help myself. The swirliest thing you'll do is swirls. So that's kind of crazy on this cup, right? And then we have some more. So um, it doesn't rip like a pin tool, no. This, um, it, it, it's hard to explain. If you're, my clay is a tiny bit damp for this tool. This tool likes the clay drier than the P1 tool. But it, um, it cuts through it, yes, but it's a diamond bit, so I think that's why it cuts through in such a nice way. Um, back to this guy right here, that's the P12. I mean, I couldn't even try to do a swirl with this if I wanted to. It would be painful for everybody, for you to watch, for me to do. Your hands just can't, you just can't do it. It skips too much. You don't see the L4 listed. Um, is, no, this is a product they've been selling for years. I don't think, look under Diamond Stylus Tools. It's the crown, the L4, it's the crown and ball and see if it's listed that way. They may have changed their designations on it. People are finding an L2 diamond stylus tool 
2.5 millimeter crown, 0.7 millimeter ball. That's it. They've changed it. Sorry, folks. Didn't mean to. Did not mean to confuse anybody. Uh, uh, to be fair, I've had this tool, this particular one, for six years or so. I don't even know. I don't even know how many years. Years. And that goes to show how long they last. And you don't need to sharpen their tools. They get sharper the more you use them. And the only thing that does happen is with, like, the carving tool I'm using right now is eventually you'll carve so much that you've carved through the tip. And that's why you can get replacement tips for these. I've only carved through one, and I do a lot of carving. So look what we got, some cool triangles. This cup's sort of the, um, like a train wreck happening, but it's okay. It's all good. Let's just do some sideways lines now. So we carved, we carved a crazy thing. Uh, <laughs> so I'm guessing it's the L2. The important part, I'm going to tell you all, so this will answer all the questions about that tool. The important part is that it is the crown and ball. That's the important part, is that it's the crown on this end and the ball on this end. That's what this tool is, a crown and ball. I don't know what they designate it because, sadly, I, I don't know every single product or I at least don't know Diamond Core's website um, inside and out. I just don't. And so if they've changed products a bit, I might, have, I might be out of the loop. But I will tell you, whatever they call it, it's spectacular. So it's great. And you saw how we did those swirly whirlies. That's kind of crazy. That's, that's sort of a crazy thing It's happening here. I don't know. I kind of wish I had just done this on the whole thing, but you know, you get some crazy stuff on the back too. And oh, I'll sign it. Um, it's a little wet for signing. I'm gonna let it set a little while longer so I can get a nice crisp signature. So it's going, it's, we're calling this the L2. You like the swirlies on the top and the straight on the bottom, Marie says, right? So, uh, I mean, and then you have that. So then you get two and then the L3, which is the football, large and small footballs, is a good option. Do I have any other carving tools besides diamond core and have they held up sharpness wise? I have tried other carving tools. They have not held up, sadly. Um, diamond core tools is the only one that has um, met my rigorous standards of carving requirements. Yeah, uh, that's why I keep using them because they're the best ones out there. There's other companies making them. They're just not as good. I know they cost less, but if they're not good, well, then you just got to buy, you, you got to go buy a diamond core anyways. So you might as well get the good one to begin with. So you can only buy one. You're trying to choose between the P1 and the P12. Um, I think the P1. I like the P1 better than the P12. I mean, if we're going to get, I mean, this is, this is like picking your favorite children. How do you do that, right? You have, you have a group of them. You like them all, or however many you have, right? And I really, I think if I was going to pick the one P carver, I'd go with the P1. And if I was going to do one of the diamond core stylus, I'd get the L3. Those are my two that I, I would pick knowing what I do. But this one's pretty great, too. It has a lot of options because you get that really fine and then that wide. So you have to, you have to think about what you're going to do and what will work best for you. All right, and so this piece here is leather hard greenware. I will have to put it, I'll have to wait for it to dry first and then put it in the kiln and then bisque fire it, then take it out and glaze it. And when it's done, it could look something like this, right? Here's a piece, let's pick, let's pick up something that looks a little more along the lines. Believe it or not, this could look like this once it's fired. So it gives you a really good idea of what is going on. Now, as far as a carving like this, you want to use a glaze that's going to show your carving. Don't use an opaque glaze because you will obscure your beautiful carved design. Use a translucent glaze, something like my Oribe or my Chun Blue. Any of Amico Celadons would work great. Any Clayscape Celadons would work great too. So 
There we go. So you have a diamond uh, coarse graffito tool when you use it, you have a problem cleaning the slip from it. So it should be, your slip should be dry enough that it doesn't stick. If it's too wet, then uh, it will stick, but it shouldn't be. So wait until your slip's a little drier. Uh, there can be a little dust on the surface, that's fine with a carving tool, that doesn't hurt it at all. Um, but it, it, should be, it should be a nice dry leather hard. Oh my goodness! Wow everybody, wow! Um, so this is the last demo for Clay Share Con. All we have left is for me to give people lots of prizes. That's all I have. So I'm going to clear this away and I will be back in 15 minutes because we're going to be giving away a whole bunch of prizes tonight. And I'm pretty excited because I love giving stuff away. So I'll see you all back in a few minutes. <laughs>